Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books, and now we're looking at Super Mario Brothers. Its incredible success is not supposed to be surprising because Disney hasn't beaten Universal since 2019. Well, Universal doesn't have more resources, it doesn't have access to more talent, it doesn't have more studios, it doesn't have nearly the access that Disney has to multiple franchises that could be incredibly successful if Disney would just do good animated movies again. They can do that if they want to. There's a piece of this article that talks about why Universal's animated movies keep beating Disney at the box office. And you can imagine they don't get very real about it, but it's interesting to see what Screen Rant has to say about why Super Mario Brothers is so successful and why Disney, even with an unlimited library of franchises, if they really wanted to coordinate what they were doing and put out successful projects, they could do it almost effortlessly, but they choose not to do it. Universal's kind of been on the ball as well. Since 2010, Universal has released five movies related to Despicable Me and the Minions franchise, and the last Minions movie did so well in 2022 that they have a 2024 Despicable Me coming out, which will probably also do incredibly well because guess what? Of course, they're not going to undermine their franchise. Additionally, the Bud Light people have kind of figured out that their marketing department needed a change. Alyssa Heinerscheid, who was leading the brand since June of 2022, has taken a leave of absence and is replaced by Budweiser's global marketing vice president, Todd Allen. This is coming from Ad Age. So she's out on a leave of absence. What does that mean? Well, it means they're getting rid of her, sort of, but they don't want to fire her just yet. Perhaps when people are paying a little bit less attention, to the controversy because it's still getting a tremendous amount of attention. She can go find another job doing something else, or maybe they'll stick her somewhere else in the company. It would be funny if she did exactly the same silly thing again and managed to damage another one of their brands. I mean, perhaps at that point she could permanently leave the company, but she's temporarily out of that position. I mean, who knows what marketing they're going to be doing for Bud Light right now. They've really blown up the brand. It's interesting that Disney hasn't completely blown up their brand yet. They've damaged it, they've weakened it, but they haven't had the kind of response that Bud Light has had from their customers. This article from Ad Age talks about Bud Light's transgender influence backlash, what brands can learn from the controversy. And they claim that in the long run, inclusive marketing will win, experts say. But brands that take stands will face short-term challenges. Ad Age is a very sophisticated publication. It's been in business for years, long since before the internet, it's for basically everything to do with marketing, advertising. It's a very serious industry publication. To publish this is fairly incredible because for one thing in the article, when they say that experts say that in the long run, inclusive marketing will win, there's no basis for that. Inclusive marketing in the long run can't win because what marketing actually is, is its own specific discipline. Marketing is not what Alyssa said it was in her video where Marketing is about representation. Marketing is about evolution. And the perfect evolution is representation. So that literally, if you just find popular people who are transgender and put their face on your existing product, that's supposed to be marketing. No, it's it's not marketing just because Dylan decides to take pictures of your can and put it on their social media. That's not marketing. Marketing is a little bit more complicated than that. Marketing did not just get invented during the social media phase. And it's about targeting your audience, figuring out who would be interested in what it is you have to sell, and then communicating specifically to that audience that wants your product. This Alyssa Heinerscheid made the accusation that Bud Light was too fratty and it was falling apart and it wasn't a successful brand and it hadn't been for years. Made the accusation that Bud Light wasn't a successful brand in that it was losing its audience, wasn't relevant, it needed to be more inclusive. Well, Bud Light has been for many years the most popular beer in the country. It wasn't doing badly. It didn't need this extra stuff. And what's amazing is if they wanted to introduce beer targeted to transgender people, obviously the colors are pink, blue, white. You could do that, make a new beer, but they never want to do that. It's always about capturing and replacing existing brands that have a built-in audience. And that's Disney's obsessed with doing that. Bud Light tried to do that. And you see what the results are. Disney is weakened and Bud Light is, I mean, it's a dead brand at this point. There's really almost no way to recycle it. I was thinking about this yesterday. Like, how would I recycle and, and reboot the Bud Light brand after all this disaster? Well, what I would do is I would put uh, sexy women on the can. I mean, that's all you could really do is pictures of sexy women on the cans, not even do a lot of publicity about it. Just start doing it. 
If you've got like a 12 pack, then you should have 12 different images. Let people collect them all. Do as many as you can. In fact, that would be interesting. Maybe you'd have a hundred new images a week coming out on the cans and just get people talking about it and get them positive about it. It really do the opposite of what they did with this uh, Dylan can, which, you know, was not popular, didn't work, would be quite the contrast and would also send a message to the marketplace like, hey, look, we understand who wants our beer, who likes our beer, we're gonna just put that out. That might work. Other than that, I don't know what they do with it. Why does Screen Rant say that Universal's animated movies keep beating Disney at the box office? There's really not a good explanation. Let's see what they have to say. We know what the explanation is. It's a woke disaster. They destroyed their franchises. They could have done an animated Star Wars movie. The Spider-Man movies did relatively well. There's, on, there's no limit to what they could do. They could have just done a sequel to Frozen 2. Frozen 1 came out in 2013, did $1.28 billion. Six years later, they were able to squeak out Frozen 2, which then did $1.4 billion. Now, Bob Iger has recently said a month or two ago, oh, we're gonna focus on Frozen 3. We're gonna get that one out. Why is it taking so long to release these movies? They're not masterpieces. I saw both the movies. There's no reason why you can't release a Frozen movie every two years until it stops making a billion dollars. That's the kind of thing Disney should be doing and could easily be doing. And this is just one of how many franchises they own and control. Here's what Screen Rant has to say. While the pandemic can be partially responsible for 2020's box office rivalry, Universal has surpassed Disney by a wide margin in subsequent years. One reason is that many of Disney's animated movies are expected to stream on Disney Plus around 45 days after the theatrical premieres, which decreases incentives to see the film in theaters. NBC Universal's Peacock isn't as popular of a streaming service as Disney Plus, especially for animated family movies, so it doesn't hinder box office success nearly as much as when anticipating subsequent streaming releases. No, actually, because all the studios are starting to realize they need to do this now, something Warner Brothers Discovery has been talking about. Putting the streaming release out soon after theatrical allows you to capture some of the momentum and the buzz and the promotion from the film coming out in theaters. So if it comes out on streaming a couple of months after, there will still be some talk and some residual interest. You'll get more bang for the buck out of the promotion. When people care about a movie, like the people that are enthusiastic about Super Mario Brothers, or even when Frozen 2 was coming out, people were excited about Frozen 2. If they had Frozen 3 coming out this summer, people would be going to see the thing. People who were interested in Frozen, it would do probably another $1.4 billion. As long as they didn't change the film so much as to it be unrecognizable, like they've been doing with so many of their franchises and undercutting what fans want. Additionally, Universal has launched sequels to massive franchises during prime release windows, whereas some of Disney's big animated releases since 2020 haven't been part of established series and were poorly marketed to audiences. Well, why would any of these movies be poorly marketed to audiences? Doesn't Disney have marketing resources? Have they not put out a bunch of other movies before? Don't they know someone who could maybe help them get their movies out? Absolutely ridiculous. What they should be talking about is Disney's terrible management, their ignoring of their franchises. Part of it is their exploitation of their agenda. And part of it is just that it's this massive, absurd negligence at Disney. We're just coming up with a reasonable plan and executing on it. It's as if there's no focus on the business whatsoever. Universal's hit animated movies like Sing 2, Minions The Rise of Gru, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, and the Super Mario Brothers movie have also had incredibly successful marketing campaigns, which played up their roles in familiar franchises. With the Universal continuing to release sequels to hit franchises in upcoming years, Disney won't have an easy time reclaiming the number one spot at the animated box office. Well, isn't this funny because didn't Bob Iger just recently say that they need to cut back on Marvel sequels. They can't just be doing sequels for every Marvel character. And that of course is because they've gone ahead and destroyed traditional storytelling through trying to push their agenda with having even a sequel, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, not actually being about Black Panther. They set it up well, Black Panther 1 did very well, very successful movie, but he couldn't be in the sequel. Of course, very tragic, Chadwick Boseman passed away, but they needed to obviously recast him. 
But even similarly in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, it had many faults to it. But the number one fault was it wasn't focused on Ant-Man and his journey. That's what you're supposed to do when you're doing a sequel to a character's movie. You can't just throw the whole family in and say, okay, well, this is not really just about Ant-Man, of course. It's also about his daughter and his other relationships and other people that have superpowers. And now we have to focus on introducing this Kang guy, which they did, and that's terrific. But of course, Jonathan Majors may actually not even be able to continue as Kang. And then that movie had all the other production problems. Is Universal releasing any movies that are so convoluted like that where there's no anticipation for them when it's any of their franchise properties. Marvel has so much going for it, or at least it used to, that almost anything that was reasonably well done, and Black Panther's a good example because it wasn't a great movie. It was an okay movie. Incredible mismanagement. Universal is not doing anything nearly like that. That's why Universal is successful. Bud Light, the brand is dead. I don't think they're going to use my idea. I don't think they want to produce anything that serves an audience that they don't personally like. I think they want everything to be focused on their future for trans this and trans that. Here's another article from the Washington Post, an opinion. The Bud Light controversy reminds us how toxic masculinity can be. Now, is it toxic because of Dylan's actions? No, it's because they want to take a product that people have identified with sometimes for decades and then re-identify it completely so that it serves a different audience. That's what this Alyssa character said she was doing. She said she was going after a different, younger audience and the people that are interested in this subject matter. So what are people supposed to do? They buy a product because they like the product and they like the associated identity with the product, the brand of the product. You change what the product is all about. You may as well be selling them empty cans or put coffee in there instead of beer. This is not why people bought this product in the first place. This guy though thinks that that's toxic masculinity if you don't just submit to all of their messages and everything that they're trying to accomplish. It's really a depraved mindset. And now you know why they don't talk about tolerance anymore because it's basically like, listen, just do what you say or we're gonna call you toxic. We're gonna attack you. And while we're at it, we're doing everything we can to destroy your culture and change it into something completely unrecognizable because we've considered this and we've decided that this is the future. Finally, people saw Bud Light and had said, you know what, we've had enough. Is Disney gonna face backlash like that eventually? I think it's possible. I think it's getting to be time that people are just getting fed up and they're just kind of saying, no, no more. We're not interested in anything that's done for representation purposes. If you wanna put representation marketing on beer or on bread or on soda or in films and entertainment, people are not gonna respond the same way anymore with tolerance. People have had enough with the tolerance. They've had enough with putting up with all of it. Everybody has a chance to exist. Everybody has a chance to live their own lives. They can't force their agenda on people and force people to spend money to support and promote what Alyssa and Ad Age think are what's right for you and your family and your children in the future. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is the start of something? Bud Light getting pushed out of the marketplace. Disney continuing to sink further and further and further. And they can make all the excuses they want to make about how, well, all of the marketing campaigns for Disney films were terrible. And just coincidentally, all the marketing campaigns for Universal's projects were great. So tell me what you think about this. Do you think that this Bud Light pushback, where people are basically not buying Bud Light, they're refusing to engage with their product, is that going to start to be something that happens with more and more of these woke products? Do you think people are going to start pushing back on Disney and any of these other companies putting out woke entertainment and just say, listen, we're gonna Bud Light you if we keep this up. We are not interested in what you have to sell. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your comments, really appreciate them. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.